Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, the world seems to be ever more stormy. For some reason, this uh, summer, at least to Pastor Gary, it seems there's a lot of chaos, a lot of setbacks, a lot of tragedy, a lot of turmoil. Such was the case for the disciples, at least that one night in the boat when it was about ready to capsize. We know it was filling with water and they felt like they were going to perish. Sometimes we feel the same way. Take the prayer we just sang to be still and know that you are God. That no matter how overwhelming these storms may be, we know that you are control and you take your power to protect your dear children until, until we're in that place where there are no more tsunamis or haboobs or earthquakes or tornadoes or heat waves will be protected from ever in heaven. We give you thanks for this protection now and for that in eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to talk about real storms. It's easy to preach on this text about the stilling of the storm metaphorically. Jesus calms the storms of life. I even did that in a prayer a little bit, but today we're going to talk about Jesus' control, his power over nature. It's the first miracle of four in a row in the eighth chapter of Luke. And it seems to me if we took one at a time, it'd be a nice little four-part series. The power of Jesus. Miracle number one shows the power of Jesus over nature. Now we live in a very modern, sophisticated, progressive era when we, we don't seem to be affected by the, um, the storms of nature, but they can happen at any time, at any place. And so if and when it happens to you, you don't panic. The first thing you remember is that Jesus is in control. It wasn't but a few weeks ago when a small toddler fell into a moat which was the home of a wild animal, a gorilla. There was a time, just to stop for a moment, when animals weren't wild. All animals were domesticated. There was no preying on or uh, flesh eating inside of Eden. It was only until sin was introduced that animals and peoples started devouring each other, became carnivores. The consequence of sin affects even nature and animals. But this little boy you heard in the news fell into the moat of an undomesticated animal. It was a gorilla, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And everybody panicked. Everybody panicked. But Jesus was in control of that gorilla. It was thousands of years earlier when another person fell into a moat, into a pit. His name was Daniel. And he was lowered into the pit for certain circumstances, not because he had done anything wrong, but because he trusted God, that the king was forced to have him executed. And the way they did it in those days, they fed the convict to the lions. Daniel didn't panic. There's nothing in the passage of the Old Testament of this man of God, Daniel, that says he panicked. Sure, he might have been a little bit nervous, but he descended into this pit, and did the lions tear him apart? No. Jesus is in control of those man-eating lions. And Daniel was safe. The power of Jesus extends to nature because our little skit up here demonstrates what's in the Bible that Jesus is in control of the wind and the waves. Beautiful Savior, King of creation. I forget that sometimes. I've got it down that Jesus is my Savior. I've got it down that Jesus is the sacrifice for sins, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. 
I've got it down that Jesus is my friend and my brother. I've got it down that Jesus is in heaven preparing a place for me. But I often forget that Jesus has been around since day one. And he created this magnificent universe and he stuck with it when it became flawed. He didn't just throw his hands and said, out oh, there on their own. No. Even when hostile nature and undomesticated wild animals come at God's people, Jesus is watching over you. We need to remember that and not panic. Speaking of panic, Don and Maggie were a couple, hmm. a marriage. It had its ups and downs. There was one issue in Don and Maggie's marriage which really got under both of their skin. Maggie liked to share everything immediately with Don. But Don was often in a project. He's one of those guys who's always doing something, type A personality. Know anybody like that? Huh? And when he was doing his fix-up jobs and his projects, he didn't like being interrupted. But Maggie wanted to tell him. And it caused some irritation. It caused some irritation. So they knew they had a problem, and they got together, and they started talking, and they, they struck an agreement. And the agreement that Maggie could tell Don anything she wanted to if she just waited till he was done with the project at hand. It worked for a while, for quite a while. And one day, Maggie had something she wanted to tell Don, but she knew the rules. She knew the rules. So she came out of the house, and she walked into the garage, and according to the new rules, she stood there, quietly, according to the rules, waited for Don to fix the carburetor, or whatever it was he was doing. And it took a while. And finally, she saw Don get out from under the hood, take the rag, wipe his oily hands, come over to Maggie and says, okay, what is it? Maggie says, the house is on fire. The disciples didn't do anything like that. The disciples didn't do anything like that. Jesus wasn't working on the carburetor, miracle number one out of, Matthew, out of Luke chapter 8. And don't forget, the next three weeks that I preach, we'll do another miracle. And all of these miracles together tell us the overwhelming, the comprehensive power of Jesus over every sphere of calamity that can happen in your life. The first is nature. Jesus was in a boat on a lake, asleep, as were the disciples. And a storm came, and you know what it says? And it says, and a storm came from up above. It was a tornado. It was a tornado. That's the way tornadoes do it. That's what scholars think. It was a tornado on the water. Any of you been, any of you been in a tornado? Midwest? Do you have tornadoes in Nebraska? All the time. All the time. Those are hostile forces of nature, life-threatening. So this tornado comes down over this boat where the 12 and Jesus are, and Jesus is asleep. Maggie probably would have waited till Jesus woke up especially if she was a person of faith. Do you do that? Do I do that? I don't do that. I fall apart. I panic. And so do you. You call yourself a child of God. You know you're going to heaven. You have faith to go to heaven. But how about faith while you're here in this sin-marred world? Why don't we use it? Why do we fall apart when the air conditioner goes out because of the heat? Oh, the air conditioner is full on. I'm going to die. 
Jesus is going to watch out for you. Before I moved down here to El Centro, I took a friend to the sand dunes, right up here, not, not the sand dunes. We made the mistake of going during the summer. No. Okay, there's nobody out there. But this guy was from Korea, another international student, and we went out there in a sense. So we drove around, did no, no fees, just drove in, da da da. Wanted to get closer to the dunes so we could walk around a little bit. Drove in the parking lot. The parking lot was full of sand. We got stuck. The first 10 minutes, it was funny. The next three hours, it wasn't. I panicked. I forgot Jesus was in control. And he watched out for us. He watched out for us. I had AAA. He had roadside service through insurance company. We called them both. We had two tow trucks, one too many. Jesus was in control. Can we get to the point right away? Jesus is in the boat sleeping. He's human. He's just like you. He gets tired. He has temptations. But he's also God. He proved that when he got up and said to the wind and the waves, did you see me do that with the kids? What'd they do? Except Nathan. He kept thundering away, but eventually. He's God. Your best friend, your Savior, is God, and he's going to protect you from all that nature can throw at you. Even if you're lowered into a pit full of man-eating lions, Jesus will shut their mouths. Come back next week. We'll do another miracle. Another display of Jesus' power over another sphere of life. Hmm? Another sphere of life. Might be dis it'll be disease eventually, not next week. Disease. How do you use Jesus? How do you use your faith when you're sick? I mean really sick. Miracle number four, the raising of Jairus' daughter from the dead. How do you use Jesus when you're dying? You can. Come back. The power of Jesus. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds. In Jesus for heaven and in Jesus for the storms of life. Amen. Shall we